Hello viewers, in this particular video, I will be talking about accelerometers, which is an example of a vibration measuring instrument. In the first video, we established how a typical vibration measuring instrument will look like and what are the different components inside it. So this was the schematic which I used in the previous video. So giving you a bit of description about the schematic this particular case which houses this particular seismic mass spring and damper is connected to the vibrating body so our purpose is to measure the acceleration of this particular body over here onto which this whole thing is attached then we have a transducer over here transducer is a device which converts a mechanical signal into an electrical signal to put it in briefly in this particular diagram i haven't shown the details of the particular transducer that i am talking about but it will measure this particular relative displacement as shown here then we went ahead and we started to formulate the problem mathematically. We initially assumed that the vibrating body is vibrating like this where capital A is the amplitude. Then we formulated an expression for the relative displacement which is Z which is this relative displacement x of t minus y of t we used basic principles and we arrived at an expression for z of t like this where capital x is the amplitude of z of t and e raised to i omega t will take care of the frequency thing this vibrating body is vibrating at a frequency of omega so the relative displacement will also have the have a frequency omega this particular capital x is a complex number so it will have both amplitude as well as phase so phase is minus 5 where phi is again a function of zeta and r in case if you are wondering what is zeta and what is r zeta is the damping ratio which is the damping constant divided by the critical damping constant and r is the frequency ratio which is the ratio of frequencies w is the frequency with which the body is vibrating and omega n is the natural frequency of the vibration measuring instrument so this is in summary this is what we have seen in the first video now as i said in the beginning of the video this particular video is devoted towards accelerometers so what is the purpose of an accelerometer we need to measure acceleration of the vibrating body but what we have in our hand our transducer will only measure the relative displacement which is z of t from that we need to compute the acceleration of the vibrating body which is nothing but y double dot of t or in other words it is d square y dt square in all my videos this dot symbol will correspond to taking the derivative of that particular quantity with respect to time in most of the occasions so now we need a connection between this these two quantities one is the relative displacement and other is the acceleration let's go ahead and see how accelerometers 
measure the acceleration of vibrating body precisely have a look at this particular equation closely we can just plot this particular quantity on the right hand side which is the ratio of this is the amplitude of the relative displacement and this is the amplitude with which the body is vibrating okay so next we are plotting that particular quantity as a function of omega by omega n there are few interesting observations in this particular region this plots for this particular quantity modulus of x by modulus of a are coinciding with the plots for omega by omega n whole square or in, in other words if the natural frequency of my measuring instrument is so high compared to the frequency at which the body is vibrating then the ratio omega by omega n will be so small then we are in this particular range or in other words this particular quantity assumes a value r square well and good then you may ask me this question so what is so great about this you made the natural frequency of your instrument so high and you are arrive you are able to arrive at this particular po position now what is the advantage of being here the advantage is then modulus of x can be written like like this simple math i'm just substituting for r square again you can ask me okay now what is a omega square hold your thought for a while actually a omega square is the amplitude of the acceleration of the vibrating body because we assumed that or we started off the whole discussion by assuming that vibrating body is having a displacement like this then if i take the second derivative with respect to time then it will be this is a minus sign e raised i omega t so this particular mathematical operation tells me very clearly that in that particular regime if i am able to measure the amplitude of the relative displacement then it is directly proportional to the amplitude of the acceleration of the vibrating body because 1 by omega n square is just a constant because natural frequency of your measuring instrument won't change so when the acceleration of the vibrating body increases then this mod x will also increase that means when the vibrating body is having a higher vib acceleration your transducer will be able to measure a higher value for amplitude of x so that is the range in which accelerometers often work because they can directly link the relative displacement to the acceleration of the vibrating body make sense now we will discuss about a technique using which we can actually improve or rather increase the range of frequencies in which a particular accelerometer can be used before diving into the details i want to drive home one another thing 
we said that modulus of x divided by a will assume a value of 1 for an accelerometer. In other words, that means this particular term over here, excluding this r square, the rest of the terms should come to a value of sorry sorry I made a made a small mistake over here let me correct it so for an accelerometer the value modulus of x divided by a should take or should assume a value of r square not 1 which in turn implies that the rest of the terms should assume a value 1 as shown over here. From the study of harmonic vibration we know that this is known as the magnitude of frequency response. This is denoted as g of i omega, it's a conventional notation. That tells you or that briefly tells you the excitation of a particular mechanical system against an harmonic excitation of frequency omega. In my earlier videos I have described it this particular quantity in detail. So you can always go back and see those videos. So the point I was trying to tell you is that if I plot this particular quantity which is modulus of g of i omega or modulus of frequency response then I should get a value of 1 for a accelerometer okay so in this particular plot I am plotting it I am plotting modulus of g of i omega against little r which is the ratio of frequencies so we started this discussion by saying that I need to improve the range over which or I need to improve the useful range of my instrument in this case my accelerometer okay what can be done towards that we will discuss about that by taking two examples or two curves in this particular example. The first curve I will be talking about is this or the first case I will be talking about is a light damped case, light damped case where zeta is zero, nearly zero. And in the second case, we will talk about a mechanical system or a vibration measuring system in which zeta is 0.7. And compare the useful range of frequencies in each of these cases. Okay, so let's get started. In both cases, let's say I'm happy with one percentage error that in turn tells that modulus of g of i omega can fall within this particular range okay for a hundred percentage accuracy this should be exactly equal to one but i'm saying i'm happy with one percentage error okay so we have again two cases zeta equal to zero and zeta equal to 0.7 so in the case one if you closely look at the curve I will use a different color let me use blue so this is the range this is the upper limit of g of i omega can g of i omega and this is the lower limit for g of i omega okay for this particular curve g of i omega is only within is within this range for values of omega by omega n less than 0.1 so if i need my g of i omega modulus of g of i omega to assume a value between these two bounds then my r value should be always less than 0.1 that is very evident from this curve because once it crosses 0.1 then my g of i omega is assuming a value greater than 1.01 so that means 
in this case r should be less than 0.1 which means omega by omega n should be less than 0.1 which means omega less than 0.1 times omega n so this is the useful range this is the useful range let's say if my natural frequency is 10000 hertz then i can use the accelerometer only to measure up to 1000 hertz because i to we took that omega n is 10000 hertz then i can only measure up to 1000 hertz in this particular case make sense with this measurement will be with an error less than one percentage okay now let's move to the second case where in in the particular vibration measuring instrument i have introduced some more amount of damping and i have raised or elevated the value of zeta to 0.7 let's have a glimpse at the graph once again so in this particular case we are talking about this fellow this fellow over here this particular curve so for g of i omega to fall within this bounds of 1.01 and 0.99 respectively we can have a value of r till this like i can draw that till this so when r is less than 0.4 and zeta is 0.7 the value of g of i omega is well within the bounds when r increases from 0.4 then g of i omega is coming down from the value of 0.99 which is not acceptable from our error constraint because we have put a constraint of maximum possible error is 1 make sense good now so we looked at the curve so we are saying r should be less than 0.4 that means omega by omega n is less than 0.4 which in turn means omega less than 0.4 omega n let's take an example for the sake of explanation the same example let's say i have my accelerometer whose natural frequency is 10000 hertz now in this particular case i can measure up to 4000 hertz with an error of one percentage but in this first case it was just thousand hertz so the key concept or the takeaway is that you can improve the useful range of your accelerometer by introducing some amount of damping into it before we wind up this video briefly looking at the things which we have seen in this video so we understood accelerometers are basically high frequency instruments and their useful range can be improved by introducing a little bit of damping into it and we saw the equation for the which connects the relative displacement with the acceleration of the vibrating body they are directly proportional and the proportionality constant is 1 divided by omega n whole square so thanks for watching